Okay, we've been working on this for a while now. My composition for my landscape works without an additional element, but by having an additional foreground element that I still need to do some direct adjustments on, it just really makes it clear what the foreground is because you have this kind of melting water, what the middle ground is and what the background is. Without it, it's all just kind of, it all merges together as kind of flat. So sometimes adding an additional element, even if it's beyond the five you need, is a good idea. It's going to make your life easier. It's going to make things work out better for you. And it's nice to be able to search for a reference that's more targeted. That's exactly what you want. So now if I just do some direct image adjustments for it, I'm going to play with the levels. The lighting's really good for it. It works with the direction of the light. You get this little sunbeam, and it feels like it's even getting caught in the light, which is nice. I can play with brightening that up, but then I blast out really quickly. And that's what you want to be really careful not to do, because as soon as I get to pure white pixels, then I lose all the pixel definition that's in there. So when the histogram looks like this, there's a lot of white and a lot of black. So if I shift it on the edges, it's gonna to go to solid black very quickly, and it's gonna to go to solid blasted out white very quickly. So that's why I say it's always safest to play with the midtones first. And so I can just shift them a little bit darker or a little bit brighter, but that way it won't blast out. So I think, yeah, shifting them a little bit lighter works. I can limit the highlight a little bit, not too much. Limit the shadow a little bit, but not too much. Okay, now playing with the color. Color balance first. It has a lot of those cyans. And I want to keep a lot of those because it pushes it into the foreground. Things will get more saturated as they come forward. Yeah, it doesn't need a lot. Because the more I blend it in, the less it will stand out. And I like this because it does stand out. And then, of course, hue saturation. I can play with the spectrum of the color and make it like brown ice, purple ice. I can shift it into all cyan. And maybe, usually I'll just use the spectrum just to nudge it slightly in one direction or the other. What makes sense. So I'm going to push it a little bit more towards the warmth. And then in terms of saturation, I can actually intensify the saturation, which looks crazy. I can take it out, but again, I want it to be pretty saturated. So I might even intensify it slightly in the foreground. Lightness or darkness, maybe I'll just lighten it a little bit overall, so it's kind of more in the sun. So what did all those changes do from this to this to this to this? And now I can go in with my hard-edged lasso with zero feather. And I can shape it away from chunks of it. Think of how, how ice melts. Try to think about that for your shape. Everything will get softened and rounded. You might want to feather a little bit of that, that cut out. I 
some of those hard edges are really helpful. All right. And then to transition it, I'm going to show you now tool adjustments. So instead of affecting the whole layer, I can use these tools to do what the direct adjustments do, but to do them in just certain areas. So they're in, down near the bottom. They're called the Dodge Burn and Sponge Tool. Dodge, which looks like a, a black lollipop, will actually brighten things. So just like a regular brush, I'm going to use 0% hardness. I'm going to make it pretty large, just like my, my soft eraser. And I'm going to take the exposure. And my rule, my self-imposed rule for dodge, burn, and sponge is always less than 30, because these tools are pretty strong. So I'm going to do an exposure of around 20. And I'm always going to affect the mid-tones first for similar levels, for the similar reasons as to the levels. I don't want to blast it out. I don't want to get to white. So if you dodge highlights, you're going to get to white very quickly. But if I dodge the midtones, it's going to brighten just this area where I'm clicking. Now it's also making it kind of neon green, but there's a different tool to take down the saturation. This is just like levels, it's just for the lighting. And this is to help with the blending of it, because I want that water texture a little bit. I don't want to lose it all, but I need to change the the lights and darks. I also tend to always overdo dodging and burning. So how do I get it so it's not so intense? Well, that's the sponge tool. And you can set the sponge tool to desaturate, which is almost always how I use it. I'm going to do the flow at less than 30. And I'm going to use the same large soft brush. And this way, I can hit those areas I just lightened and now it will take some of the saturation away, some of that intensity of the color. Now, I used the sponge tool and the dodge tool a lot there. You can see what a difference that makes. I didn't erase anything, I just changed their, their coloring and their lighting. You can also make little direct adjustments or direct tool adjustments just where you think the reference could be improved. Like if I think that in here, that could be darkened. That's a tool called the burn tool. So. My reference has this dark kind of shadow right there. So if I wanted to darken next to it, I'm going to do mid-tones. I'm going to take my exposure at less than 30. Nice, large, soft brush. And I'm just going to add a little bit of shadow to it. And that will help that be less of an eyesore. If there's any shadows you want to deepen, if I wanted to, sh to darken the shadow at the base of this ice melt, I can do that all with the burn tool. So you can improve upon your photo reference. And this is what photo retouching is. And then I can do that to help blend some of these other areas, right? So I have this really dark shadow there. I can find what layer that belongs to. And then I can actually dodge it a little bit, brighten it up. So that that water matches a little bit better. Now it intensifies the color, but then I use my good old sponge tool. And I take that saturation down. Then I can go to this layer and I can actually add saturation, which I don't usually do. Because when you saturate, you don't get to choose what color it becomes. It just intensifies whatever color is there. So instead of adding saturation with the sponge tool, I almost always take it away. 
but you have the option. And then I think I want to darken it here, so I'm going to use the burn tool. And you can see it's transitioning pretty well now from one pool of icy water into the next, even though these reference photos were totally different. And in special effects, water is especially unforgiving because it's kind of known for being so many colors at once. It's so reflective. Now, what if I want to change the coloring of one area, but not the other area? Then what I can do is I can lasso within that layer. So let's say like here. Take this big chunk of this layer. And I'm going to do it on a duplicate but I could also just do it directly in the layer. So I'm just leaving this big chunk, which is a little too purple. And then I can use direct adjustments just on that selection. So direct adjustments work on a full layer that you select or on a selection within that layer. And I'm just gonna go right to hue saturation and I'm gonna shift the hue a little bit. And I'm not looking at the edge here, I'm looking at the water itself. I want it to get a little bit darker blue. And sometimes you have to saturate it. So right now it's very purple. I want to shift that towards a blue. It's working there. You can get avocado skin if I want. Darken it a little bit. Okay, and then I can always use color balance as well for more subtlety. There we go. Take a little bit of that red out of it. Now by doing it on a duplicate, I can compare it. So that's what it was before. That's what it is now. And now I can erase away from that. First with 100% opacity soft eraser. Get rid of these crazy edges. I could also do that with the sponge tool and desaturate them. And now when I use the burn tool on it in the midtones, nice big soft brush. It should work a little bit better with the colors that it's surrounded by. Give a little bit more of a shadow to this ice edge here. It's a little non-distinct. I carry that through my different layers. That's where that blue is coming from. Yeah, so dodge and burn and sponge, all very helpful. It will make your composites better. <laughs> 